There's something you need to be aware of right off the bat. This game does not star Ronald McDonald. I think if you look closely, you'll find that that's actually Donald McDonald. In Japan, the fast food mascot was renamed because Ronald's a little bit difficult for Japanese speakers. And that's why this game is Donald Land. Donald Land is a prime example of Kusode. Not Kusoge, Kusode. That's the portmanteau that Japanese players have for Kusoge, or crappy game, and Deco, or Data East Company. It's for games that are deeply, deeply flawed, but still have a certain amount of charm to them. When I've played Donald Land before, my impression has always been, boy, this is a bad game. And now it's still, boy, this is a bad game. But I can see the promise in it. If its mechanics were implemented just a little bit better, maybe, maybe Donald Land would be good. It's so close that I could honestly say it wouldn't be a difficult hack to make this game good. The idea of Donald Land is that the Hamburglar is causing chaos throughout the country. He's abducted everyone's favorite characters, and Donald has to go out and rescue them. The game is an action platformer. Donald will have to run around, jump over obstacles, and throw his bombs to defeat enemies. The B button pulls out and throws a bomb. And that bomb has a lot of momentum. Donald's speed when you throw the bomb determines how far it will go. You can also press down to throw the bomb downward. This bomb throwing inertia feels fine, but Donald Land isn't really designed for it. When you're moving fast and you throw a bomb, it tends to go off the screen. And when you're near the top of the screen and throw a bomb, it has a bad tendency to get stuck on the screen itself. Bombs don't detonate immediately when they hit something, so there's a good chance that if your bomb goes off the screen, it's done nothing. At least bombs tend to stick to enemies when they hit them. That mitigates some of the problems with throwing bombs. One of the strangest features of Donald Land is that you can ride on top of just about any object. So you can ride on top of enemies to reach new heights, and more importantly, you can jump on top of the bomb you've thrown. That technique is actually required to use in Donald Land. There's a lot of gaps that are impossible to jump without that technique, or are pixel perfect, so you will want to use it. Except it's really difficult to do. This hole at the start of stage 2 is a perfect example of it. You almost have to use the bomb to get over the hole. Fortunately, there's a 1-up right at the start of the stage, but you will have to bomb jump to get up to that. There are 12 stages total in Donald Land, and stages 2 and 3 are the hardest stages in the game. They're long, require perfect jumps, and that includes using the bomb technique. You have a health bar, it starts at 3, and you can collect up to 5 hearts. And if you die at any point in the stage, you have to do the whole thing all over again. And on stages that require perfect movement, you're going to be going back to the start a lot. Fortunately, the game also offers infinite continues. And in the worst case scenario, there is a level skip code, though it's a little bit tricky to use. At the title screen, you have to press A, B, right, left, and then press and hold a button combination to select your level. While holding that down, you press up, and that skips you to the level you've chosen. If you look closely, the level select is a binary code, with each button on the controller being one bit. Level 2 and 3 had me stuck for around 15 minutes each, but I didn't even die on levels 9, 10, and 11. It's kind of odd that the last half of the game is horror-themed, too. I also encountered some bugs in Donald Land. Like here, the ship in the background was supposed to fire cannonballs, then I would ride the splashes over. It didn't trigger the first time I reached it, and so I wound up trying to cross with a bomb jump. The pickup system in Donald Land is just a little bit confusing. Getting the bomb means that you're allowed to throw two bombs at once. I actually didn't find that to be particularly useful. Donald's face gives you an extra life, and the heart gives you one life point, of course. The burgers are currency. At the end of the stage, you'll have two different shops that you visit where you can purchase things. First, naturally, it's McDonald's. Buying food here will give you chances in the bonus game to earn extra things. Honestly, it's not worth it on this one. 
Except, if you buy a burger, fry, and shake, then you get a discount at all of the McDonald's after that. And that does make the bonus game worth it. After McDonald's and the bonus game, then you get the chance to just straight up buy power-ups. This is where I'd recommend spending your burgers, unless you're buying the whole combo. Statistically, everything costs far less in the second shop than buying the food item and gambling on the bonus game. If you had asked me halfway through my play session if Donald Land was worth trying, I would have gone no way. The difficulty is insane, and it just has too many other problems. But then that last half of the game was actually kind of chill and fun. Not top tier material, but something you would get some enjoyment out of. So I guess that's a, feel free to try Donald Land, but be willing to skip some stages if it comes down to it.